This might be a quick class. Get you in and out of here quick. I promise I don't bite. <laughs> or if I do, I've had my rabies. Cassie can attest to that. She gets to see my month or yearly uh, shots. I'll minimize that. Did I hit record? It didn't. Excellent. There we go. See what happens in two minutes. <laughs> oh, this camera. Well, I know how you're doing. How are you doing? So I don't have any computer devices. Neither is this gentleman. Oh my gosh. Oh. Excellent. Are you all on social media? Yes. Excellent. Facebook? Yes. Personally or business? <laughs> Personal business. Neither. Excellent. No, both. 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 Yeah. I like to hear that answer. Both. From personal to business.com and Instagram. Mm -hmm. Like, um, what I didn't like that, like, business accounts, they won't let you use, like, specific sounds. It's like a limited. And then you have There's to pay for it. I was just, let me just do it. Yeah, I would say just be careful because if you're on your personal and you're doing stuff business wise. Oh, no, I split them. But what okay. I meant is like I didn't register it as a business account. So. Right. And, and I think in your personal account, you can actually like with Facebook business page have the two linked, just create an extra page from your personal, which is what you want to do anyway. Uh, that way you can target uh, target certain audiences with certain messages. Um, you know, and I get it, you know, with Facebook or um, with Instagram, who's owned by Facebook. Um, there are a lot of really cool tools. I'm surprised nobody asked about TikTok, which is good. Uh, I think the big thing on TikTok is uh, as much as it's a powerful video platform, what's your age demographic? So a lot of what you're doing for business, you have to, you know, what is it? 18 to 25 year olds are on TikTok, right? Even though outside of what you're, what you're hearing in the news every day, Chinese government controls it, collects all this data, target, blah, 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 blah right? Just be mindful of those platforms. They, you know, Snapchat is still out there. That eventually went away. Why? Because Facebook started doing stuff very similar. Um, you know, there's pros and cons. There's the good force. There's the bad force. You know, not to use a Star Wars reference on all this stuff. You know, hopefully everybody here will use it for the force of good, right? So, what we'll talk about today is. It's all about, especially in our second class, about our game plan, about how we want to communicate and how consistently we want to communicate. It's really all social media is, is keyword social, which is connection, right? That's why it's so popular. People want to, you know, I bet you still, you've connected with all your friends back from when you were in kindergarten, right? Yeah. Right. And you haven't seen them in 30 years. so. Why? Because you're curious, you want to know you can act, you remember a time when you were younger, right? It's kind of one of these. Um, I, you know, I, I don't think any of those, I mean, every, everybody's got their little niche, but I think overall, our big thing, at least in today's class, if your Facebook business page and your YouTube page is set up correctly for DRE requirements, 
Okay. The big thing that we got to be careful of is DREs, I think fines are at $2,400 per post, per post. Not just that overall your channel looks, you know, doesn't have all your designations, but it's per post because it's, that's your frequency of connecting with people, whether you're doing a targeted ad, a posted ad, a, a post, you know, whatever. DRE has a, a whole bunch of people scouring real estate agents, Facebook yeah. pages, you know, for stuff like this. So, you know, I know one agent a few years ago that got hit with a $10,000 fine from three posts. So unless we've got that money lying around, we just need to be really careful. Um, we'll talk about the setup today. If you don't have one yet, it's really easy to do. It sounds like you've got one, you've got one. So this is going to be a lot of review, but maybe give you a couple ideas of, hey, maybe I can tweak it a little bit. We'll also spend time on YouTube when you've done videos. I want to, but like, this is just overwhelming, this and this and that. Okay. So given time today, we're going to go, over, we're going to actually create an intro video. You're going to use your phones. Okay. Everybody's at least got some equipment. You don't have to post it. Just introduce who you are. Okay. Well, hopefully, you know, hopefully you know who you are. I did put the real estate agent, but I didn't put my license for my friend. Maybe that's well. That you have to. But when you post it, but when you post it, right? It's like with your intro video. And I wish I had my third class today. You know, my usually the way this class or this set of classes work was let's do social media, right? Or set it up. And the second class was all about making an actual video, right? Using video editors. And then the third one was your content strategy topics to start talking about, right? To be consistent. Nowadays, it's just kind of like slumped down. So I'm trying to get you into that. You could use video editors very easily, especially like Instagram, where you can literally type text on that video right then and there. Um, iPhone users, movie it's free download it i use we video because i go from pc to mac at home and it's an internet platform so i can just log into any of those computer systems and make my videos okay so we're gonna have a little fun to that so sir ma'am young lady because you were in my first class today my name is anthony i work at here at board, been here for 20 years. I am your, let me turn on my mic so that can hear me a little bit better. Um, I'm your trainer. I train on MLS, uh, I train on zip forms, which was our first class today. <laughs> See, we gotta get you in here, especially on the new platform that zip forms has now. But I love training on tech. I love showing you how you can make your lives a little bit easier. I know it's overwhelming with technology nowadays, but if this is the reason why you're here is because you want to try it out, right? Are you doing any right now? The what? The any blog. social media posting, videoing? Yeah, I have a blog. My you blog. have a blog? Yeah. Hey, sir. No. I will tell you there's a young lady that I got to see last week at a trainer's conference. Her name is Marky Lennon's Wild. She's a real estate agent, realtor agent out of Chicago and amazing woman. Uh, mm -hmm. Talking about 20 ways to repurpose your content. So in your maybe blog post, you have a video blog post, well, that's got audio, probably some snippets in that half hour to an hour long that you can just section out and then just repurpose and put it on Instagram, Facebook, shorts, whatever, to get that out there. I mean, you know, it's, there's a lot yeah, at your disposal. Very good, but I noticed my strategy is like you create one mm -hmm. and then you just throw it everywhere. Yep. You can take the audio out, have an audio podcast. Yeah. You can snip it down to like a 10 minute one for Alexa because Alexa has short podcasts, which is a uh, skill that you can enable. So you can create a skill for yourself. Now you all of a sudden you have a client and you go, hey, download my skill on Alexa. And all of a sudden, Hear you every week, you know, but how do you get that? You gotta be consistent. So we're gonna have fun. So today, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over social media marketing. Um, 
not just video, but starting with the basics for our beginners. Um, so this is just a basics class. We're gonna go over how to set up your Facebook business page and of course your YouTube channel to be DRE compliant. Some of the things to look for if you're doing this, why you wanna go with these two platforms at least, okay? Uh, we're gonna to touch on that right now. Speaking of which, there's my experience. So everybody attending today will get a copy of today's video. So we are recording, so please feel free. We're also on YouTube Live. So like podcasting, so the world and the masses can hear everything and critique me on Tony, you're full of it, or Tony, hey, that's great, or hopefully a little bit in between, okay? So why Facebook? Um, now, these stats are from last year. Uh, Facebook has more than 2.04 billion users on Facebook worldwide. Now, if we think about that, What's the largest country in the world, anybody? Russia. Okay, population. Largest what population. Mean, there we go. Population? Uh, India now. India. India, India. India now? Yes. What's India? Yes. Well, geez, all that throws a monkey wrench in there. So what are they at now? 1.4, 1.5? I think China was at 1.3, 1.4 billion last year. So if India has now overtaken them, which I don't know how you're going to feed all those people in that tiny little country. Facebook is the largest country in the world. 2.4 billion people. There's only what, 7 billion in the entire world? So we've got more people. Now, 79% of Americans go into Facebook every day. 93% of consumers go online before they actually buy a property or buy anything. We all do some research, right? We see those advertisements on our Facebook, on our Twitter account, on our YouTube channel. Facebook's got a ton of advertisements there. Off to the left, off in the middle of your newsfeed, we're constantly being plugged to. And it's really interesting, right? So, but our consumers, home buyers, home sellers all go online. Now you may go, well, geez, so why would a seller go online? They're looking for agents. They're looking for a professional to be able to service their needs. So the first place that they're going to go is they're going to look online for that professional, not just a Google search, but hey, on that Google search, has anybody ever Google searched your name? What's one of the, one of the top five things that pop up? Your social media. You have a social media presence, people are now curious to look at what's on your feeds, right? So they're finding somebody to help them sell a home or hopefully buy a home and help with that. They want to connect with you. We we're just talking about that a second ago, right? Social media is all about being social and having connections social. They need to feel that common bond with you. So that's why they go there. Now, funny enough, today's clients, 62% of millennials, Found an agent on social media and went with that agent. Number one reason they felt like they can, they got to know the person and earn their trust. If you're not on social media, if you're not on doing videos or what have you, to at least put a little bit of yourself out there, you're doing yourself a disservice. Now, a lot of people are very skeptical about privacy and stuff. You don't have to talk about everything about your lives. All right, now do you talk about everything about what's going on in your life? Thank goodness, all right? Some of the kids nowadays, they have no filter, but we grew up, some of us, well, at least me and the older generation, grew up with, don't tell everybody everything you know, hold some of that back, it's okay. It's all right to be private, right? You know, you have that, you know, that right. So, you know, we can do all that, okay? Now, 91% uh, of realtors do use social media, which is good, but they don't use it consistently. Now, back in 2002, Facebook real estate ads ranked number seven out of all the ads for any business, okay, with an average click through rate of less than 1%, 99 or 0.99%. The highest rated number one Facebook ad. Uh, was 
automotive. They ranked number one at 1.01% a few years ago. So you guys aren't very, very much different when it comes to automotive advertising, right? Just one or two extra clicks here and there. That's all we need. Now, two years ago, or th uh, two to three years ago, the average click uh, price per, or cost per click CPC was $1.81. So if you advertise to a thousand or so people in an ad, it costs you roughly about $1.81. Today, uh, it's about $3. Rough. Which is still not bad. If I can get in front of a thousand to two thousand or sometimes a hundred thousand people, or roughly a couple hundred bucks to run a two-week ad, be amazed at how great that app will be and what leads you get from it. We do have um, uh, platforms that will help you create Facebook ads from your own property website called Reela. For $100, it all of a sudden 2,000 people and you get 13 leads. Now all of a sudden you convert, what, three or four of them? You think that one $100 two-week ad paid for itself? This from the commission? Probably. Right? I just saw on Facebook last week, it's called Engage, uh, uh -huh. $67 for years or something like that. I don't know if it's worth it. Or... I would research a little bit more. It's only worth it if you use it, right? It's like, geez, I've got the Ferrari, but it's been in my garage. Was it worth the buy? Maybe not, right? A lot of things that we fall in, into when it comes to being pitched stuff, we want it, it's a nice shiny bottle. If you never use it, what do we end up saying? It was a waste. This is horrible. Why would anybody ever use this, right? So I would research it a little bit. If the Engage sounds, you know, $67, what is it, per year or per month? Per year, and they will do all of the uh, ads for you. It can, but I think there's a lot of other things today. You've got AI. Anybody here? AI, chat, chat, GPT. Did you know that you could actually have chat GPT actually create a photo for you? Just tell it what it is that you want. I want a 70 year old retired football player walking the dogs and it will actually create that photo. And it's realistic looking. And it becomes your art, which is quite interesting. So, you know, I think I saw something in the news where somebody actually created a picture of the Pope wearing this big old buddy looking jacket and this winter coat in, in Italy. And people thought it was a real picture because they couldn't tell. So, no, you could do that. Um, real quickly, some mind blowing facts about YouTube. Uh, more than 2 billion unique users. So it's number two up there. So it'd be the second largest country in the world next to you, uh, Facebook. 30 million visitors go onto, onto YouTube each and every day. And as a matter of fact, YouTube is the second largest search engine. Guess what number one is? We can probably see it every day. Google, right, guess what? Google owns YouTube. So Google owns number one and number two search engines in the entire world. Now. When it comes to videos, 5 billion videos are watched every single day. More than 500 hours of video are uploaded every minute. More, more than 1 billion hours of video are watched on YouTube each and every day, which is kind of crazy, All right? I wanna say this number has actually increased. More than 10,000 videos have actually generated over 1 billion views. So, um, Oh, 70% of YouTube users actually watched a video or who said that they watched a video, it actually helped them make a decision about their purchase, right? 80% of those YouTube users who watched the video said that it helped them make that purchase decision and said that they watched the video at the beginning of their shopping process. And when we think about that, when it comes to real estate, we've got 72 or 70% of people 
saying that 70% of our clients saying that videos help them make that purchase decision of either buying or selling the house, right? In most cases, buying. Problem is, is that in our MLS, we have got less than 15% of our listings that have video. So if 70% of our clients want video, but less than 15% have video, what is it that you as agents are not doing? <laughs> Videos, but it's not meeting the client's demands. Clients want it. They want to see it. They want to be able to digest it. But yet, we as a business aren't providing the necessary information for them. We're not providing their wants or needs. We're not showing them what those homes have, right? And nowadays, when we had COVID as being a major issue, this is more important than ever. Why? We're visual creatures. Women are more visual than men, surprisingly. Right? Demographically, six out of 10 people prefer online video to watching live TV, right? And an average month, eight out of 10, 18 to 49 year olds watch YouTube. And they predict by 2025, which, hey, by the way, that's only two years from now. Viewers under the age of 32 will not subscribe to paid TV services. Why? Everything's streamed. What does this mean for YouTube? It's the new boob tube of the world, right? Anybody remember that term, boob tube, or ever heard of it? You never heard of that? This was used to be called the television. We sat in front of the TV and we all became boobs because we all went, oh, the TV, right? Mom and dad could sit me down in front of the TV for hours, leave the house, and my cartoons were playing. Right? Dylan's Island, Brady Bunch, Tom and Jerry, all of that. Come back, hey, we'll move. Here you go. Here's your bowl of cereal. Right? We see that in some movies today, right? Back in the 50s and 60s when he was super launching. Mom and dad, kids, family all sat around the TV. They're no different. How many of you? <laughs> now it's phones. Right? How many of you? into the restaurants and the kids are screaming and they're yelling and going crazy. What's mom and dad do? They're about the tablet device, play a video, kids get real quiet real quick. Mom and dad all of a sudden whip out their own phones, watch their own programs, and now we've got a nice quiet dinner and nobody's talking with each other. Now here's a fun little fact that unfortunately the subtitle is hiding, but I'll move this off to the side just a little bit. Did you know that YouTube pays you if you get so many followers, have so many views on your videos, right? Number one, YouTube generates two times more income each and every year because of all the advertisement. That's why you see all the commercials nowadays, right? Because of everybody watching YouTube and streaming and all this, commercial businesses are now capitalizing on that. I can't tell you how many Zillow ads, Redfin, Realtor.com, NAR, car ads in a 30 minute video I get to see. So my 30 minute video is actually an hour long, which is a normal TV program today. Funny enough, kids make the most money. So if you got kids, get them on YouTube. The highest earner back in 2018, 2019 was an eight year old child making $26 million from their YouTube videos. You know what kind of videos they were making? Reviews, review on product. They order something from Amazon, they sat down in front of the camera and talked about what it is that they bought and if they liked it or not, and if it was useful. The second highest earner at $20 million was a five-year-old. Don't we deserve a piece of that pie? An eight-year-old and a five-year-old are out, out making money by most people. Doing the same videos, which is why everybody's trying to do the same videos. Now, do we plan on getting paid from our videos? No, not necessarily. This is why we want to close properties because we get paid at the end. It's the satisfaction of knowing that this is such a powerful tool with so many people on it that we want to be able to get our little niche, our little corner, right? 
All right. Any questions so far? Kind of amazing, right? Anybody here have small kids? Not yet. Not yet. Grandkids? No, no grandkids? Okay. Well, good for you. All right. How you can use YouTube for marketing? You're going to create an image of authority. Okay. Um, business videos contain your views based on your experience. How many of you have more than six months of experience? No way. Everybody's here a newbie? Less than a year? No, oh, good. Congratulations. Have you done anything so far? Shown property? Write up a contract? You close an escrow? Guess what? You got some experience, sir. You? Oh, I do part time. Coaches and a team, but on my I'm on my own. I haven't done much. Okay, guess what? Not much from a team other than hey, your team kind of helped you out with marketing, showing open houses, but you've got some experience, right? You young lady? Two years. Two years of experience. Good. Have something to talk about. Why people want to connect with you? Talk about that, right? These are going to contain your tips and strategies for what you want to try to attract in your business, right? You gotta build that credibility and trust. You gotta entice them with more than just a sales pitch. And that's something that is people in sales have a hard problem with, right? I had got a house, three bedroom, three bath, you know, on a 10,000 acre lot in Irvine. I'd love for you to come and see it. How many of you would get bored with that if I, that's all I put? What do you wanna see? Other stuff, right? What's it like to live in the community? What are my experiences? What's my life like, right? Again, talking about social media, you got to be able to build that rapport. Building that rapport. Hey, you know what? Living here in Orange County, just down the way, we've got some really great restaurants. If you're into Italian, go to Tolisi here off of La Paz and Marguerite. You want authentic Italian. Now, if you've been to Italy, it's going to bring back some nostalgia. But it's not going to be like the Olive Garden that you might be used to. And if you want a unique experience. And by the way, there's some great homes and changes happening in Mission Viejo. Contact me. Let me know. Right? We're going to entice them with something more than that. Building that relationship. Give them a reason to evaluate your services with that credibility. And of course, Video is the most engaging form out there, amongst other forms of marketing. A million different ways to market to market yourself. But this is one of the big ones. All right, we're going to go over how to create a YouTube channel, or I'm sorry, a Facebook page and a YouTube channel. But I'm going to leave my presentation super quickly and pop over to the internet. Now, I always recommend logging to your Facebook personal page because you want to connect the two. There's a couple of reasons why we want to do this, because when we have them both connected, we're going to be able to do extra things to our clients from a personal page that just creating a business page doesn't afford us. We can't request people to friend us. We can't request people uh, or our interactions with our clients through our business page is going to be very limited. So this is where we're going to ask people not only to like our business page, but open up to be friends with them. Because again, we want them to connect with us, right? So how do we connect with the, how do we make a business page? Very easy. We've got several things that we can do here. We can come over here to the left-hand side of the screen, scroll down through all these fun little menu choices that Facebook offers us, and choose the choice that says pages and click. Or at the top here, we've got these nine little dots. Top right corner. We click on the nine little dots. We get a bunch of, again, menu choices that appear. We can scroll down through that list and find where it says pages and click there as well. So we've got two ways of doing this. Now, when we click on pages, this now opens up a section here where we get to see any created page that we've created. Now, if you've never created one before, easy. Come over towards the right-hand side where it says create a new page and click. Now we're going to put in the page name. Now this is key. 
How many of you are familiar with DRE regulations of advertising? Anybody? A little bit. What's a little bit? What are your three? Broker. Okay, we got to have the broker's name. What else do we have to have? License number and what else? The most important part. Legal. Your legal name. And all first point of contact, right? Got to have our legal name. We got to have our DRE license number. And of course, we have to have the official company name on our first point of contact information. Now, we've got to make sure that with our Facebook business page, we kind of set that up because technically, according to DRE, if you go to dre.ca.gov, their website, and you type under the search advertisement, we have access to the real estate advertising guidelines for 2020. Now, they haven't updated in three years, but doesn't mean that any day they won't update this, but when you click on that, the PDF file will open it up. Well, we'll now explain all the things that you were supposed to have, your name, license number, company name, your fictitious business name, the whole nine yards, if you're on a team or what have you, of what you can and cannot do in advertising, okay? One of the things that they do talk about in here is if you're doing social media, it's gotta be on every post. Which is why we've got that $2,400 fine from DRE per post if it doesn't meet all first point of contact. So, how do we get our Facebook business page name to be compliant? Well, it's going to start with the page name. Now, the page name, we're going to meet at least two of the three requirements in creating our business page name. First thing that we're going to do is we're going to either do one of two things. If you're on a team, or you're the owner of your team, or you're the creator of your team, then put in your team name, okay? But if not, most of us are the agent. So here we're gonna put in, of course, being my age nowadays, you gotta start wearing cheater glasses. So, and of course, got my caps lock on. Put in your name, your legal name, what's on your DR license. Now, maybe you indicate that you're a realtor, if you are. Okay, and then finally, to meet our second requirement, putting your DRE license number. I can't tell you how many agents just put in their name or their, their team name, right? They're getting hit with this. If you've already created it, there would be a choice here. It should be under your settings, actually. Have you got any followers? Oh, there you go. So here you're going to at least put in your first two DRE requirements. Your name, your license number, indicate that you're either a real estate professional or a real estate agent or a realtor. Hopefully you're all realtors, okay? <clears throat> now just remember here, I'm not putting my company name. Why? Because I'm not the owner of the company. And the last thing I want is to have the broker all of a sudden take over my business page because they own the company name, okay? Now your categories, real estate. But you notice here, the moment I start to type in real estate, we got real estate, real estate agent, real estate company real estate appraiser, commercial real estate agent, you know, select all that apply. That way, if people are doing Google searches for a real estate agent, your business page is going to get flagged. It's going to be found in this SEO, okay? Now, your bio. And it looks like they got rid of the 250 character limitation so far. That's good. Your intro. A little bit about yourself. Now, when it comes to this, how many of you have all seen when it comes to a real estate agent, they all kind of say the same thing. Hi, my name is Anthony. I love selling real estate. I'm a real estate agent, been in the business for 22 years. I buy and sell it in Orange County, Riverside County, LA County. Doesn't that get boring? 
If we're limited in characters, we got to say certain things very quickly and efficiently, right? If they immediately identify you as a realtor, you need to necessarily say your name and that you're a real estate agent in your bio. Probably not. But let's have fun with our bio. Sir, how long have you been living here in California? 30 years. 30 years. What part? What part? Orange County, LA County, Riverside? First 10, 10 years in LA County, Irvine. Okay, you've lived in Irvine for 20 years. So, what do you like to do for fun in Irvine? Play ice hockey and we have four new ice cream. Excellent. So, guess what? To get to know you personally, why don't we have some of your bio talk about place, the best places to go ice skating or play hockey at in the city of Vermont? And the best thing I just found out last year, we have underground water is so abundant in it. Mm -hmm. The ice rink is all from underground water. There you go. Well, you don't have to say that in your bio, but that's good to know, right? Because if somebody asks, wow, I'm into hockey too. I never thought about Irvine having a great ice rink. It's a great conversation starter, right? So, yes, you've been in the business for what? 20, uh, two years. Two years. You love working with clients to help them with their real estate needs. But hey, by the way, if you're ever in Irvine and you're ever playing hockey, I hope to see you at, what's the right name? Great Park. Great Ice. Park. Ice rink, right? Yeah. You play a game of hockey. You are you a forward center? Everything. You play everything. What do you, what's your most favorite position? Uh, left wing, but I play more goalie now because I'm old. <laughs> Good job. So I play goalie. So hey, if you ever want to, you know, try out your slap shot, love to take you on right here at the Great Park. And if you by any chance need to buy or sell a home in and around Irvine. Feel free to give me a call, right? Not about bad buyout. What are we trying to do? We're trying to connect with people. We know the area. We talk about certain things in the area that might be overlooked by a lot of people. I didn't know that about Great Parks, you know, personally, right? But now other people may see that. You're now above and beyond just a real estate salesperson. You're a person that knows their community. So we talk about that in a little bit of our bio. Now, from here, after we put all that in, all editable. Now we got over here, we've got our desktop preview. Now we've got what looks to be on a desktop, what looks to be on a phone, but now we got to get our images in. Now I know a lot of people, when it comes to your images, and come on. There used to be a. Come on, where's my create button? Why am I not seeing it? Usually, when I'm zoomed in too far, it just finds a reason. No followers. Oh, I see it's already. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, anyway. Same... So no capital, right? No capital. All right. So anyway, what happens here is that once you make your page, you now gotta put your image and your background. Okay. Now when it comes to your background or when it comes to your image, upload a photo, profile picture of yourself, have something that's recent. Don't be like some of the agents that I know that are still using their profile pictures from 30, 40, 50 years ago, right? We all go through changes, right? Some of us gain weight, some of us gain gray hair, some of us lose hair, some of us gain hair, right? Put your profile picture up, be consistent. Now, the background image. I know a lot of real estate agents usually love using properties, right? I use my client's property. I use my listing, whatever is my background image. What's the problem with that? The moment the property closes, I'm no longer allowed to use their images in any of my marketing. I'm advertising someone's house possibly. Instead, 
first point of contact. You'll notice here, I've got my business card, right? Got my name, got my phone number, got my email address, got my company logo, my company name. If you're working at a company that's got your electronic business card all laid out, or maybe you take a picture of your business card, upload that image. That way it's an immediate identifier of who you are, who you're with. So we've got our business page name as our name, comma, realtor, DRE license number. We've got our page with all of our first point of contact as an immediate visual identifier, right? Now you go, well, geez, Tony, you've only met two of those, two of those requirements on this business page, right? Name, DRE license number. How do I make that third requirement? The third requirement is going to be the post. When I'm actually posting, after I publish and I go to create a post, I'm always going to begin every post with my company name. Because in Facebook, you're only allowed to change the business page name twice. So, and some of us may switch companies periodically, right? At least with my post, I can indicate who I'm with in the, in the opening remarks of the post and then write what my post is about. But if you notice here, this post will have the business page name, my name, comma, realtor, DRE license number, and then the post will begin with the company I'm with. And then I post whatever else. So once we get to that posting stage or that, that uh, publishing stage, we can start writing our posts. This is how we want to do that. This will make all three DRE requirements. Because even if I went from Jack and Jill to ABC real estate, now it's just a matter of changing whatever is written on that one post. Maybe I even indicate in a new post, hey, just join a new real estate company. ABC real estate. So you mark those days of when you've transitioned different companies. You don't hopefully ever change your name. And the DRE will always have your license number as long as you keep up, keep it up, right? Any questions on that one? You might like that one. Yes, ma'am. Like, um, Instagram, for example, when you post something, it automatically um, does something like Facebook. Facebook. It can. Can we like connect link to the page? We're gonna, we're gonna link that. We're gonna go over that right now. So, by the way, here on the business page, you also have um, a section down here about. Fill in that section, your company address, your phone number, your email address, your website. We don't want to put our personal address. Why? We don't want clients showing up at our home. Not to mention 2.04 billion people. There's always creeps, right? We don't want anybody showing up at our house that we don't want to, but at least you can write all that information, what hours you work from. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Anybody here sleep? Exactly. <laughs> All right. So here, finish filling out your about section. Okay. Now comes the major fun stuff. Back over here to the left under where it says manage pages and profiles. We're going to scroll down and we should see here. Which one? Uh, that's up to you. I don't, I don't. But over here to the left, sorry, I had to shrink it down. Uh, let me see if I can, there we go. Yeah, gotta love Google Chrome. Over here to the left, one of your menu choices, you got home, newsfeed, manage shop. Down below, there is a choice that says settings. We're gonna modify some settings.
Now, under the general settings, we've got some settings that we're going to set up first. Okay. Page vis visibility. We can make the page. <laughs> we can make the page visible. We're going to do that last. Okay. Choose who can publish to your page. In this case, you're going to leave it as a default of you and you alone. Okay. If you're doing Facebook Live videos from your business page, you can have it automatically generate um, captions. Basically how I'm doing on Zoom here, where you guys are reading the captions, you can have Facebook Live do that for you, okay? Which is always great. Um, some big ones here, do you age restrict your page? 18 years and older. 17 years or older, or it doesn't matter to you. Um, this would be under the settings. So under the page settings, so off to the left. Let's see if we can back out of that. That's okay. So off to the left, scrolling down this entire list, there is a choice under insights. called settings. So you should see homes, news feeds off to the left here. And then when you go to their settings option, we're just right now dealing with the general settings. Now, um, age restrictions, you can put in age restrictions. I don't know too many 17 year olds that are buying homes, but, or under 17, but maybe you're putting, putting stuff about community. What's the benefits of living in Irvine besides being an adult? Great activities, stuff like that. Maybe you want that available for younger people. Okay. Um, profanity filter, turn it on. The sad thing about internet today and social media they have what they call the troller. Anybody here familiar with trollers? Yeah, are you a troller yourself, young lady? No. For those of you who don't know what a troller is, it's somebody who likes to just pick fights with people. They'll get onto your social media and they'll just say some of the most vile stuff just to argue, just to get a rise out of you. Well, turn on that profanity meter so that it doesn't allow them to post profanity. Not even you. And I know sometimes we, we like to just fly off the handle, right? Well, now we've got to be creative with our words about what we want to type, but also our, our you know, respondents, okay? Turn that on. Um, also turn on the translate automatically. Two billion people are not all here in the United States, they're worldwide. And some of us may also know people that don't read or speak English very well, but maybe they have their computer set up in Farsi or Tagalog or Chinese or Japanese, right? Well, do you want to exclude them from getting to know you? Of course not. Turn on the button that says translate my page. So if their computer is translated into a different language, your page will be too. Now, not necessarily all your content will be translated, but at least your basic message and some things will be translated automatically, okay? Oops, and then save your change. Uh, let's see here, another one, maybe you're getting out of the business, you can then remove the page and your business, okay? Now, young lady, you were mentioning about um, Instagram. Over to the far left, with all these extra menu choices. Here you can engage or upload your branded content, meaning your branding. So if you're working with a um, graphic designer, maybe you've hired them from Fiverr or somebody in your office made your own personal logo, upload it. That way, content that you're posting, video or post or flyer, will have that automatically in the post, right? 
a little bit separate from the company. Why? Because you're branding yourself as a real estate professional. You're an independent contractor, okay? But there is a choice here for Instagram. When I click on Instagram, I can now connect up my Instagram page to my business page. So now if I post something to my business page, I can now immediately share it to my Instagram. Or if I'm on Instagram and I've paired it with my Facebook business page, if I do something on Instagram, I can also share it back into Facebook. So connect the two if you're on both platforms. I've heard that if you post something in Instagram, you can automatically pop the link to Facebook. Yep. But if you go into Facebook, you have to do it individually to go into Instagram. So I don't know what why that. Just the way they've got the connect accounts connected, I guess. I don't know, Facebook's kind of funny that way. <laughs> um, let's see, real quickly here, um, once you do all this information, by the way, you can do your ad limits, like how much money you maximally you want to spend. If you have, um, I love this one, that's a new one, diversity info. I think that's new. Um, page roles, basically giving other people. So if you're hired a marketing expert, to post stuff to your Facebook business page, you may need to give them access to your business page. The big thing that you want to be careful of is only giving them edit rights. Don't give them full on um, ownership rights. If you give them ownership rights, they could kill your page. Go, go back to the bottom, say remove page. That's mm -hmm. when you want to remove this page. Yep. Right. If you're done, you're done with real estate and you don't want to do it anymore. Well, you make Yep, then you can remove it. Beautiful thing about this is you can create as many pages for all your different businesses. So maybe you're a florist as well as a realtor and a you know um, commercial you know guru. You make all your individual pages advertising your different businesses, which is nice. Because you're going to appeal to certain people differently. Your messages will be different. Okay. <clears throat> now, if I get back, once you publish, so under that settings, general publish, after you publish your page, after you've gotten it set up the way you want it, now we're off to the races at this point. We're ready to post things. More importantly, we want to request people to like us, page likes. When we go to page likes for the very first time and we get one shot to do this, really, because then it will all then hopefully be organic thereafter. You get one shot at the likes. You're requesting your friends to like your business page. As long as you get at least 10 to 25 likes, so we'll unlock a lot of extra features like the scheduler, the uh, events coordinator, all that other stuff on your business page, which is great if you're advertising an open house. You could schedule an, an, an event on your business page of an open house at a property on a particular date, and maybe you're going to host a Facebook Live. Right? You can put all that in, send it out to all your likes. Now, the power of the like is this, right? Because it's not just who you know, but it's also who they know, okay? Now, the power of the like is super powerful. Say you get 500 people to like your page, but each of those 500 people have 500 friends, right? And I post something on my Facebook business page. Not only do the 500 likes know about it, but then all of their individual friends get to know about that post as other potential likes. So from just one post alone, without doing anything extra, no boosting, no anything else, we can hit up to 175,000 people. 175,000 and not have to spend a single dime to do it. That's powerful, right? Intriguing, right? Now, 
You're off to races developing your content. You got to develop your content strategy, right? You got to dedicate some time, operate under some sort of code of conduct, what you will and will not tolerate when you're posting and what other people are posting. Track, look for that information, adjust when you need to. And then, of course, most importantly, stick with it. It's not going to work overnight necessarily. It does take time. I will tell you, it took me about two years before I got traction on any of my videos on YouTube. Just have to be consistent with it. Okay. Now, real quickly. Cool things when you post. You got targeted advertising and boosted posts. This is two paid platforms, but they do and operate vastly different. Right? A targeted advertisement is where you can put things by location. Sorry, let me. You can, you know, this is your targeted ad. You can put it all together, a flyer, a video, a link to your website, a way of capturing the lead that you're generating that to, setting yourself up on a budget, a time period. And now that ad starts hunting for business for you. And that appears in the middle of your newsfeed if you're on, business, on your personal page. Now, a boosted post allows you to boost whatever you're posting currently on your wall for a fee to hit sports fans or whatever you genre of or group of people that you want to talk to about that particular post. Now, if you've not seen where these two lie, I use lie as a very loose term. When you're on your personal page, you notice here there's an ad right there in the middle of the screen. That's a targeted ad. Whereas on the right-hand side here is a sponsored boosted post. These will sit here every session for a couple of weeks. The ad will appear periodically, however long it takes for you to be intrigued by shopping or learning more or what have you, which now redirects you to their website to grab your information. How many of you have actually bought something from a targeted ad? Yeah, right, shoes, clothing, car, house, right? It intrigues people. And it doesn't have to be a still shot. It can be an actual video. I love this. Everybody's just got their thing. You know, Star Trek, it's because I'm a Star Trek nerd. I'm a geek, I admit. But you have all this available to you. So now, what happens at this point? Back on your business page, you're going to look at things like your insights, people you've reached, right? If you've reached people with certain postings, what you can now do is request them to be friends. It's great that we've gained their, their visual right interest in us, but now we need to gain their personal interest in us. So here, what we're now going to do is we're going to, whoever has liked our page or has, who we've reached, what we're now going to do is send out, um, and that's, again, done because I used to be able to see who liked my page. I used to be able to see right from underneath the insights. Maybe I missed it, but underneath the insights section, like who's liked my page. Now, when it comes to getting that, I know a lot of people go, well, geez, Tony, I put everything on my personal page. I don't want them to know everything about me or see everything, right? So I get a little hanky about that when it comes to inviting clients to see me. This is where Facebook becomes a pseudo CRM. You can control what it is 
that your friends see. This is called lists. So back here on your personal page. Why does it have different items? The home? The home takes you back to your personal page? Yeah, and then have like a flag and you have like a YouTube. Um, oh, where I can watch video. Oh, um, probably because you're on a Mac and I'm on a PC. Because I think on my, my Mac, it does show different icons too. So I think it just depends on your platform. Um, yeah, I think that's what it depends on. Um, back here under your friends. And actually, it's not under your friends. It's under lists. If I can find the lists. You guys see it? Do, 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 do. Add center groups. Did they move it again? They sure oh, did. Okay. Well, let's go under friends. I think they moved it again. There we go. Custom lists. What we're now going to do is we're going to create categories to put our friends in because not every friend's a family member. Not every friend's a client. Not every client friend is a buyer. Not every client friend is a seller or a tenant or a landlord or an escrow or a real estate agent. We need to create lists and put people into these lists. How we do that is very simple. Go under the friends button. Under your friends, come down to where it says custom lists. And then from here, we're going to create a list and then we're going to name it. So maybe you name one client, then you name another one seller, you name another one buyer, you name another one lender, you name another one tenants and landlords and whoever else. You can create as many lists as you want. Now, after we create all of our lists, we now get to have to get people into those lists. After we create that list, now what we're going to do is that instead of clicking on the home button here, we're going to now come back over to the top left corner and click on our name. From our name, at this point, we're now going to click on the friends choice, where it now shows all of our current friends that we have. Now from here, what we're gonna now do is move our mouse over to these three dots next to that friend. And there is a choice that says edit friend list. And if you can't see that, let's just zoom in here, click on the three dots, edit friend list. Now I can select all the lists that apply to this friend. So put your friends in multiple lists. All your clients, client list, but out of those clients, which ones are the buyers, which ones are the sellers, which ones are the landlords, which ones are the tenants, okay? So now what's cool about this, out of your million different friends, is that now when you're on your personal page, ready to some, post something personal, and we go to create a post, do you see where it says public? I can click on the down arrow and now I can choose a specific friend list. So here I can now go through my lists or who that targeted post should go to. So maybe I have something that's more seller specific, or maybe I just listed a property and I'm super excited about it, but I know that a few of my buyer friends might be interested. So now I could create a post about maybe something about the home, which is the better backyard. And now all of a sudden I put it to the buyer custom list and whoever's on that list now only sees that post, which is great because now my family who's not buying a house, maybe my family, my family list who's back across the United States, they don't need to buy a property here in California, right? So here, they can do that. 
And when it also comes to that social media management, I can even, um, where is it? Oh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I think there's a choice in here to be able to choose who I want to see. So if I only want to see my clients' posts, I can switch it to my clients' list, and then I will only see posts from them, which is great if I'm spending 20 minutes a day wanting to respond to my clients about what's going on in their lives, right? So, I mean, something like that is super nice. Any questions on this? Anybody excited about this and Facebook? Yeah? Everybody nervous about doing this in Facebook? No? You got this easy peasy, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Are we done with Facebook? Do you have any questions on Facebook? Boy, it's like the famous page, that's what you just created, and my personal uh so I create my business page from within my personal. So when I was in my personal, I went to pages and created a business page. So that way that affords me the opportunity to be able to request the likes to be friends. Whereas if you just strictly went to Facebook and only started a business page, there's no way for you to request them as friends because they're not linked right, together. But then like in terms of posts, if I post anything on the business page. Then you can reshare that post to your personal. So what you're telling Facebook is I'm doing business on my business page, but I'm now resharing it to my personal. Which now all of a sudden you reshare it because who you're pushing it to the lists. So yes, you could do the the boosted post for your an advertisement or an open house thing or whatever to get people intrigued about wanting to come to your business page, but when they get there, they now need to get to know you. Now it's okay to post like out of every five posts, one or two personal, like what's going on, right? Like, oh, I went to my granddaughter's recital or whatever, right? They're in, you know, whatever high school or whatever, you know, which is fine. It just means that you're a human being and you've got other things outside of your business that you're sharing. Which now all of a sudden you want them to friend request you. Mm -hmm. So, because you're now gaining common interest. Now, another question if I have two um, pages, like two accounts on Instagram, personal and business, can I connect business to the page and personal to my personal? When you click, go to that business page settings and you choose Instagram, it's going to say connect an account. Okay. And then it's going to ask you for the login of that particular Instagram page. So you can put in your Instagram business page logins if they're two separate instead of your personal. And from the personal page on Facebook, do the same. Because mm -hmm. I don't want them to like crisscross necessarily. Yeah, I, but you know, you might as well because you're everything wrapped all in one. You're a personal person and a business person. But I like. Um, We're not back in the 60s and 70s where people have separation, right? I leave home, I go home. That's my home time. Today it's kind of all wrapped in together, especially for real estate agents. No, no, I do post also like uh, now mostly I dedicate everything to the business account, which I do post also some personal stuff. Mm -hmm. But. But that sort out the friend list is like I have so many, it's just impossible to sort them all. You have um, an assistant? <laughs> no, yeah, I'll do it myself. Or what do you have a do you have a little one? Have a spouse? I'll have to figure out my spouse and he's over? very busy. He said, you know, what? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> honey, if you love me, you will do this for me. Right. Oh my god. Then we got a we got other issues yeah, at that yeah. point. <laughs> no, um, no, that's a joke. Um no, I mean, yeah, I mean it does take time. So with all things, you're not door knocking seven days a week, you're not 
Maybe you niche out a little time to, you know, maybe while you are cold calling, you take that time to sort, sort it out, right? I mean, if I get it. You have a very busy day, all of you, right? So you just got to niche it out. All right, YouTube. The fun part of YouTube. Let's not forget about it. Really easy to do in this class. Creating an account super easy. You can go the long way. YouTube.com, move your mouse to where it says sign in, click. It'll ask you to create a Gmail account. Why will it ask you to create a Gmail account? Google owns YouTube. Anybody here have a Gmail account? Guess what? You already have a YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. As long as you have a Gmail account by having a Gmail email, you can now access your own YouTube channel. Now, how we access that is super easy. Say you're in Google, you're signed into your own account, okay? To access YouTube, I could take the long route, top youtube.com, go there. Or better yet, if you're ever seeing this here in Google Chrome, there's nine dots. What does that nine dots give you access to, anybody? You know, gives you access to a plethora of Google stuff, right? A lot of free stuff. We click on that little nine dots. I can access a Google search, my account, business information, maps, YouTube. By the way, if you didn't know, docs, sheets, slides. PC users, that's Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Mac, Keynote, Numbers, or I'm sorry, Pages, Numbers, Keynote, which is great. A whole bunch of cool other things in here. By the way, Hangouts is their chat platform, right? Go to Google Hangouts. You can actually start video conferencing, okay? Um, Forms is another way to capturing leads. You can actually create a form. Uh, where is it? Did I pass it? Google Ads, Travel, Podcasts. Did I, forms. Did I, oh, there it is, Forms. Basically, it's a lead capture platform that I can export into an Excel-style spreadsheet. So after a class, maybe after a open house, send them a questionnaire, something, capture that person's information, right? But here, YouTube. When we go to YouTube, we're going to see all the videos on YouTube, billions upon billions of videos, a couple of minutes long, a couple hours long, whatever. Over at the top right corner, we see our picture, we click on our picture, drop down menu appears, go to where it says your channel. When we click on your channel, we immediately get to see our background image, whatever, whatever our channel is, how many subscribers, how many videos, this, that, and the other, right? Now, if this is your first time doing this, all we now need to do, customize our channel. Now, customizing our channel, we're going to be able to do a couple of cool things that are a little bit different than a Facebook business page. Number one, the branding. Your personal image. And then down below under your banner, upload that company logo. Okay. So, so it fits across that banner on any computer device. So your Electronic business card, scan, right? Put it up there. That way it's an immediate identifier who you are. Really easy to change. Another cool thing, your videos. You want to copyright protect all your video work. Great that you have your image, but nowadays with AI, and has anyone here seen the Google phone ads about their photos? Not seen what Google photos can now do? Geez, he and I are hanging out, scanning somewhere. Somebody takes a picture of both of us. They have their Google phone. 
Now that person can on their Google phone edit our image and wipe him out of the picture hmm. as if he was not even there. Do you think they're going to do that to your video? Sure. sure. Video. Watermark it. You have your own personal logo. Watermark your video. This does not have to be the company logo. You're going to put the company information in the body of the video. We'll talk about that in the next class. But basically, what you do is you say change. And now you find that image that you want to appear at the bottom right corner of all your video. And by the way, if you do it in a video editor, yes. But it's harder to do it if you do it a watermark through the entire video because without the access to the actual video file, it's harder for them to do. And I usually, you know, if you are putting in your own watermarks in your own videos uh, through whatever video editor, then you don't need to do this. But hey, guess what? Now you don't have to think about it. You don't have to go, oh, now I got to do some extra work, add another layer to the video editor, add in that watermark for the entire video link. It's automatically there. And you can say, have it for the entire video. Next basic information. Here's where you can change the name of your channel if you wanted to, but I'd leave it whatever you want. Underneath that, for all your various different websites that want access to your YouTube channel, how to find your YouTube channel with that. And of course, a nice description, basically the bio. Your channel's URL, which is great for your website and other marketing tools that allow you to hyperlink those images in your videos. So you want people back to your YouTube channel, okay? Now, after you do that, publish your channel. Over to the left, settings. There's gonna be a couple of things that we're gonna to modify to make our uploads of each of our videos very easy, okay? So, under the channel itself, how my channel can be found. Basic information, country I reside in, the United States. But underneath that, do you see where it says keywords? If somebody's doing a Google search, there we go. If someone is doing, let's see if it follows, you're being temperamental. There we go. A Google search, this is the Google keyword search. You don't have to, if you're paying for Google AdWords, that's fine. But here, all I need to do is click in the box, get my cursor to blank, and type in whatever word I need. And then hit tab. So this is where you're going to put in things like the state, the counties, the cities, put in your name. Now, if you're, how many people mispronounce y'all's names? If they mispronounce it, do you think they misspell it? Right. Usually when people mispronounce things, they also write in spelling how they're pronouncing it. Right? So what's your last name? G, G, some say G, but it's G. G, G, E, E, or G. And how many different ways do you think you can have your name misspelled? A lot, right? Might be G, E, might be G, I, might be G, E, 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 E. Put in all the misspellings of your name. I'll tell you, my last name is pronounced Bree, B R I E as an elephant, D as a dog, right? Sounds like brie cheese, but with a D at the end, right? Breed that. Can't tell you how many people pronounce it bry, hard, breeden. They're not in word letters at this point. 
Based on that, just put in all the different misspellings of the name or potential misspellings. That way, if somebody is doing a YouTube search or a Google search for your name and they misspell it, now all of a sudden your channel gets elevated higher. Right? I'll give you a perfect example here B R I D E. Right? I started my channel close to seven years ago. First couple of years, not a problem. I would tell my class, look for my YouTube channel. This is how you find it. Then one day, found the class the same thing. Look up my name, Tony, T O N Y B R I E D. Somebody in the class said, Hey, do you do weddings? I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> I see a bunch of wedding videos here. And I looked. I started seeing, oh, they misspelled the word bride. And I went, oh, maybe they were going to misspell my name. Now, all of a sudden, when you type in my correct name, now I come to the top of the list instead of bride videos. That's usually about 10 or 12 down. Right? But that, just know, put in all that. That way, your channel itself could be found. Real estate, G, G, G. G, Eric, excellent. Realtor G, right? I'm the cool guy, Mr. G, right? Put in all that. You don't have to worry about any advanced settings, right? Actually, advanced settings. What type of videos are you uploading? Are they adult content only? Are they okay, kid friendly? Or when you upload a video itself, do you want the choice to choose if that video is 18 or older or, you know, all ages friendly, okay? Do you show potential inappropriate words? No, we wanna be check mark that. We wanna cut down our profanity as much as possible. You can choose to disable interest-based ads so certain advertisements won't be advertised during your video. Okay. Eligibility, are you eligible for all this? This should all be enabled. Your upload defaults. When you upload a video, you always have to title it. But how are you going to title it? How would you start off a video? What would be the title of your video? My name. Right? And your name presents, right? You want to have to type that each and every time? No. There we go. No. I don't want to have to keep typing Tech Tony Presents each and every time. So here is my upload defaults. I want my title to always have that. I can change it on the fly if I want to, but just know that's what I want. Just like with my description. I can have some basic information on my description. Well, I'm going to have training. You know, in this case, my videos will be training or Hey, Jack and Jill Real Estate, and I present the following information about the cities you're living in, whatever, right? Maybe how to get in touch with me, subscribe to my channel, right? Things I would normally have to type, but I don't want to have to retype over and over again. So your name, how to contact you, your phone number, your email address, your DRE license number, right? All that information for the descriptor of your video to meet first point of contact for the description. Maybe you have your personal website added in here. So that is your center hub of capturing leads. Are your videos all public? Or are they not listed so nobody can find them? Or are they gonna all be private? Well, two point or 2 billion people, I want to make most of my videos public for anybody to find me. Down below, I have up to 500 tag words that I can put on all my videos. So not only does my channel under my settings can be found, but I want to also put in certain things here for my videos that I don't want to have to retype, like my name, my dear, my, uh, my name, I'm a realtor, how to, whatever. I'm going to put that here, but I'm going to leave enough room for when I do upload a specific video that I want to put in keywords and phrases pertaining to that property, right? Or to that video. Like, 
you know, first quarter 2023 market update, right? If I do a market update video or one, two, three, four Main Street home tour. I want to leave room for those specific types of videos. Okay. I don't think there's much under the advanced settings here. Pull potential inappropriate con comments. That's a good one to turn on. That way, if somebody writes a rude comment like the troller, you can review it and have it deleted. Because once it gets out there, it's hard to remove. Okay. Now, once you do this, which is super easy, and you hit save, that's it. Now we're ready to upload a video. Any questions on your YouTube channel? Can you publish? Mm -hmm. Oh, to publish the video? But here, what we're going to do is first create the video. Now I can upload a video, I can go live, I can create a post. And actually, this is kind of new create a post, a new playlist, or a new podcast. But typically, I'm going to upload my videos. Now, how do I upload my videos? If I've recorded one on a computer or on my phone device, all I need to do is choose upload. And from here, I'm now going to find that video. So here we'll find a video, like from this morning's Zoom class. And it doesn't look like it converted, but that's okay. Oh, wrong one. That's why. Find my video at MP4, click and hold, drag it, pull it over. Now the video is beginning to upload. Now here, we add in our title, right? Down below, under the description, right in the description. Remember, your description is also going to be found in an SEO. So if this is a property video, what's going to be some of the things you're going to talk about or write about? Sir? What is special to buy a house in Irvine? Excellent. So Irvine, what else would you put in about a property? In its description. Like, General information, bedroom, bathroom, square footage, and the city, all of this information along with how to get in touch with you for a showing, right? Which is all, by the way, contact me. Which is already pre typed in, right? Because we've already got that. We've got 5,000 characters that we can write a pretty good description, right? Maybe we interviewed a lender or a title or an escrow, give them free advertising, right? If you have any other question, lending needs, contact Bill Smith at Jack and Jill Lending at 949-555-5555 or email them at Jack at Jack and Jill Lending, whatever, right? So we have a little fun with that. Put in all those descriptors, write in your description. By the way, we've got our link for our YouTube video right here. It's just uploading. We can choose an intro picture. So if we use a video editor and we might have an opening title shot, which I always recommend, put that here. You can tie it to one of your playlists if you have playlists created, okay? Maybe community, you know, Irvine community, Alisa Viejo community, whatever, right? Or just listing videos. Is it for children or not? Yes or no? And if you say, no, it's not, you have to put an age restriction on it, okay? So again, that's up to you. If you say yes, made for kids, that means it's content friendly. And trust me, YouTube will make sure that it's, you know, falls under their child guidelines. Um, here, under the tags, we've got our upload default tags for our videos. Guess what we're now going to do? We're going to click in the box, add in the extra tag words. What would be some of the extra tag words? Well, 
three bedroom, two bath, home, pit tab, cul-de-sac, property, Irvine, California, right? Or even better yet, put in the property address. Add in all your extra tag words, okay? Then from here, we just go next. Sub subtitle. So you notice your Zoom is now doing a subtitle, right? Because I told it to. What's nice is when you do a Zoom, this actually gets separate uh, saved as a separate text file, TXT file, which now allows me when I upload my video elements, go to add subtitles. And when I go add, I can now browse my computer for the subtitles, which is now all time stamped to the video. So when I hit add, what I can now do is upload that file, maybe with or without timing. Continue, browse that computer again for that file. Uh, yeah, documents. I pass it. Too many Zoom meetings, can you tell? And then here I find the uh, closed caption. Ah, here without timing. There we go. Continue. And now it's uploaded all of our subtitle. Now, obviously, we can go through here and modify some of the stuff, but it's already coordinated the time with the video. Right? Now, at this point, we can hit done. The system will check for copyright. So make sure that you don't have any copyrighted material like music. Make sure that you're using programs that if you're paying for it, that you do own the rights to the copyright of those songs. Don't upload any commercial music like Prince, Leonard Skinner, any of those, unless you're paying them royalty rights. So under that checks there, it's gonna check the video, make sure it's compliant you know, with its rules and regs. And then next here is your visibility. Who gets to see your video? Now you've got a choice. We're defaulted to public. So the moment we hit publish, now the entire world can see it, or we can say unlisted. Unlisted means that it's not published to the world, but only my subscribers to my channel will see that's video. And then of course, private. Private people will only see this video if I send them a special invitation. So maybe you send somebody a private video about opening escrow and you need to talk about certain detail about that escrow. Like, hey, here's the um, routing number to, you know, whatever, you know, bank account to wire your earnest money deposit. You obviously don't want anybody else on your YouTube channel to see that account. And of course, you don't want the public to see that account, right? Make it private. That's if you do a video that way. Oh, so, um, or you've got one called schedule. Now this one will, uh, I like because maybe you put a couple of videos together in your spare time. Maybe you're going on vacation next week, but yet you want things to go on in a timely manner. You can now pick a date and a time from when that video gets released, which is good. So now, Talk about maximizing time, you can put together four or five videos. If you're on a monthly update, and now you can schedule things out. After all is said and done, hit publish. Moment you hit publish, this link will now go live whenever it needs to. And then you can share it. People will find it. At the end of the day, you start tracking your analytics. You want to see how many video or what how many how much your videos are being viewed, how long, how many subscribers you're getting, 
things like that. That way you can develop your content accordingly. Because obviously the more videos or the videos that get the most hits, you're going to do more of. That makes sense. Surprisingly enough, huh? So advanced. Very advanced. It can be. I know it's like drinking from a fire hose, right? So, I mean, you just start doing it. You'll start to see the stuff play out eventually. And the more you do it, the more consistent you become, the better it is. <laughs> it's it's okay play with it you can't necessarily break it trust me it's designed not to uh, not to break all right um let's see here oh how funny i have like 760 empty. i've grown over the couple of years excellent all right um you guys ready to make a video <laughs> Trust me, it'll only take you a minute. You don't have to publish it. But I want you to record yourself for 30 seconds or less. I want you to introduce yourself to me. Because by the way, your YouTube channel does have a little video in your branding. No, it's also like short. Too. Your short videos are important, very much so. What's the length of shorts in your YouTube? Which one? The short. I think they're roughly about a minute long. So what you want to do is you want to definitely go to your shorts uh, and do one. But no matter what, once you post one, there is a choice here under your branding to pick a video to be seen on your landing page. So whenever anybody comes here to your channel, there is a a video that can be automatically viewed and seen. You want your intro video. So in your intro video, I just wanted you to speak about who you are, right? Because the only way to do it is to practice. It. So just hold up the camera. Now, when it comes to your camera work, do not hold your phone this way. Hold your phone this way, where yeah. the bottom of your phone is off to the right, okay? That way, your video is at the proper length. Now, when it comes to video, too many people do this. And take a picture here. What is it that I'm looking at? Besides my neck. My nose. Fat chin. <laughs> Fat chin. The nose goblins. All that fun stuff, right? Hold your camera either at. Oh, there is. You're calling with, with the light so you know you get the you can light. you can go to you can go to um staples they have them for twenty dollars you can probably buy them on amazon they're little stands right with the little ring lights right probably about 18 19 dollars that way you can fit your phone in and do your camera work you want a good proper light on your face but today because we're practicing it this would this be okay. I just want you to do it, right? We're Nike. Nike is says what? That's, what? that's okay. We're all here. We're all here to learn, right? Cassie, Cassie, you've been on, on video before, right? Good. So Cassie's going to do an intro video. And we're going to have fun recording her. And guess what? I'm going to record Cassie. There we go. We're going to for a video. I want you to introduce yourself as if you were a Okay? So your intro video. Oh, actually, just do our intro video if you want. Ready? Go ahead. Go. Oh, God. I'm going to take a picture of it. <laughs> See, I. Did. It's a selfie. It's a selfie. All right. See, uh, if she did that, I would have recorded and sent it out. Yeah, right. it, it would, it, but everybody wouldn't know it, it, the true authentic exactly. That's right. All right, Cassie, go for it. Hi, my name is Cassie. I am your education director for Orange County Realtors. We are glad you are here in our class today to help learn the zip forms program. Ugh. Well, okay, don't send that in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're going to have fun with that. Of course, man. 
only part of it. We are here to help you learn. See, it's not everybody's. No. I will never claim to be. Okay. Oh, just get rid of that. <laughs> right so, just take a few yeah. seconds out. Thank, Thank you so much. I will. I will. But just take a few minutes because we've got 20 minutes left in class. So let's try it out. Would you? Please. <laughs> yeah, okay. I can't force you, but try it out. Yeah, I recently did a video. It's so bad though, but like so was, bad though. You know, you are like so not professional, that's the problem. I think it's better that you yeah. Yeah, you you know you need to practice with yourself in the camera. Now, if I were you, if you were at home, I would have elevated your laptop so it's a little bit more eye level. Because what yeah, you I want to do, this. good. Because the thing you want to do is, I don't want you to look at your screen. You're looking at your screen. You're not going to draw your camera. Right. So you need to look at the camera. You need to look at your camera. It's I apologize. The camera's right here. So when it comes to this, I'm going to be able to think about it. When you jump hands, we got self conscious about being in front of our clients that we didn't show properly. We wouldn't go on and listen to them just because the way we look or sound. You got to be comfortable with that. So you got to do that. But here, what's important is think that you're talking to me. A full mindset of an audience. Two, we're going to go. I have a bigger relationship. Sorry, no. But look at that camera. Okay, ready? Looking at you. My name is Susan Tang. I am an Orange County realtor, and I am supporting all of their clients and buyers and sellers to looking for to find them the new home or their, their loving homes. And where's the hot spot right now? Buying and selling property. Orange County. All of Orange County is a hot spot? Yes. And I'm like too much. So what's so hot about Orange County? Because we have the best weather in the world, and everybody loves to live here, and we are very diverse city, and you can have all kind of famous food and all kind of famous people that you can meet. Uh, please call me at 760-989-5119. And any other way of contacting you? Yes, by email. S T A N G at E P M O C dot com. Thank nice. you. There you go. That wasn't hard. You did it. You did it. All right, who's next? <laughs> Anybody? G. You want me to go first? Where it doesn't matter. Oh, yeah, actually, the young ladies all got her camera up. <laughs> Hi, Hi, my name is Yuna, and I'm your real estate agent in Orange County. Been here for four years, love it. And whoever moves here, please let me be your realtor. I'll show you around the best properties. <laughs> Call me at 626-684-8010. Or, or email me <laughs> and whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Now, that's a beautiful thing about video editing. You can edit some of that now. All right, you ready? Do you need me to hold your camera? Sure. Oh, I'm, I'm real bad with the tech stuff, no? Oh, you're bad. You know how to take a picture? The video? The video, yeah. okay. That's taking a picture of my belly. We don't want that. We want to take a picture of here. So there we go. So let me know when you're ready, ready? Good. James James on the 
about the Kuro event code you report to you scan down here to A to the Kuro 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 at the ice hockey, we have four ice rinks. At the Great Park, when it's finished, it's like Central Park. The yeah. You can contact me if you have any questions about buying or selling a home at 949 394 5356 or contact me at jamesd085 at gmail.com. Have a nice day. Excellent. I like that one. See, by the third person he's ever done, he wants everybody else. <laughs> Yeah, so better. that's what we've got to look at. So if you want, I can email you a copy of the presentation. It's got some little to-do lists here if you want. That way, did you set up your background images? Did you set up everything correctly? You just did your video. Now it's just a matter of posting it. Now you may want to re-record it again if you want, but at least you can reference it. Say what you liked and didn't like. I will say the most videos are the videos that get the most hits. Not just with you in the car, but law. They want to see you, the person, right? It's okay to have scripted videos periodically, but they like to see what what you're thinking off, you know, off the cuff. If you're out in a restaurant, you're in a city, you're door knocking, you're marketing, whatever. Talk a little bit about it, right? One of the many things that real estate agents don't do, especially around here, they don't talk about why they're marketing where they're marketing. Take that video, put it on YouTube, put it on Facebook. That way you start hitting your different audiences with your messages. Get them intrigued. Know that you know your market. Know that you know the community that you're marketing in, but all of a sudden feel comfortable in building that trust. All right. If you guys have any more questions, or don't, if you don't have any more questions, but if you do, you can always feel free to contact me at 949-586-6800, extension 104, or feel free to email me at Tony, T-O-N-Y at, and that's got my old email address, ocrealtors or ocar.org or ocrealtors.org. With that said, thank you all very much. Thank you. So uh, you, send, uh, you can send me the Yes. So Cassie signed you in. Make sure that she's got your email address. She'll give that to me and I'll make sure that you get a copy of the video in as well as the um, slides from today. Okay. okay. So is this, was this class combined with the next one? Uh, it, well, what time do we start the, the next class? 3.30? Oh, 3? Oh, Excellent. Okay. We got 10 minutes. <laughs>